Hi everybody. I tried to do a live Facebook video a couple of minutes ago and it kept on buffering as well as cutting out. So um, the people that were watching were not able to see the whole thing just because they were looking for measurements and they couldn't catch them. So I just decided to shut it off and then I'm just gonna record this really quickly so that you can see what it is. Facebook has been giving a lot of people a lot of trouble recently just in terms of trying to record things live. And so rather than trying to do it again, I'm just gonna do it like this and then, uh, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so first of all, I do not take credit for this really cute little box. There is another demonstrator, um, Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the U.S. She lives in the American Midwest, and she made this particular box. It's kind of like a Christmas gift or a host gift for somebody for the upcoming season, and you'll see why when I open it up. Uh, just as a bit of an aside, tonight is the first night of OnStage, and OnStage is our demonstrator-only event that we can register for. We usually have them, the big ones, once a year with kind of a smaller one in April, and so that's tonight. It's our first night with, um, with our awards and things like that, so as soon as I'm finished this, I'm going to go over to that so that I can see how we did because I know that I have a couple of awards in there which is kind of fun. I'm really excited about that. So um, I'm going to take this off just so you can see what it looks like. So when you pull this lid off, there is some chocolate and a cute little bottle of Bailey's inside. And so this would be like a perfect little gift if you were going to your next door neighbors for a Christmas drink, or if you were going to sit down with some popcorn with some neighbors, or if you even want to drop it off the, on the desk of a coworker, as long as you can, because of course there is alcohol in the box, right? But you could certainly replace this with something different. I know that the original posts that I have seen, when she made it, she made like, I think two or three different boxes. One of them actually had like a little tiny bottle of wine in there. So I have this and I will try and make a larger box to go with it. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna quickly make the box so that you can see how this goes together. And then you can always decide how you might wanna fill this. Okay. I'm going to put this off to the side. All right, so we need three different pieces of cardstock. I've used just real red for all of them, okay? And where do my dimensions go? Here they are. I messed one of them up before, so I actually, this is good because I was able to recut the paper uh, to make sure it's the right one. So this large piece here, this is eight and a half. It's eight and a half by nine and a half, okay? And then each of these edges was scored up by two and a quarter inches. I managed to get that part done while the original video was still going. So it's two and a quarter, two and a quarter, two and a quarter, two and a quarter. Okay, so the lid is much smaller. So the lid is, um, it's seven and one sixteenth by eight and one sixteenth. So it's gonna be quite tight when it goes onto the box. And then these are all scored at one and a half inches in. Okay, so when this is all folded over and you'll see in a moment, it's all gonna just fit nicely over the box. Okay. The last piece, and this is the piece that I messed up before, is um, it's eight and a half by five inches, and then it's scored at, it still looks slightly off actually, but I think it's not, it shouldn't be. It's scored at, um, oh, I know why, um, two and a quarter, four and a half, six and three quarters, and then this piece is a little bit shorter. And I will explain why in a moment. I just, my mind just had to take a couple of seconds to catch up. Okay, so we're gonna go back here and I'm just gonna go ahead and fold these over on their score lines. This is the way you make a basic box. So this actually works really well in terms of a lesson because this is truly how you make a box. How the dimensions, the dimensions you choose are completely dependent upon what you put in the box, what you want the depth of the box to be, how big, you want your uh, your lid to be but this is the actual basic basic way of making a box okay so I did that with the lid now I'm gonna go ahead and do that with the base okay same thing I'm just gonna burnish those folds okay all right by the way if you're running low on cardstock because this box actually does take three sheets of art of uh, cardstock the seasonal sale starts next Tuesday. It runs from Tuesday to Thursday. And during the sale, you can get 10% off of cardstock. You can get 15% off of St uh, Stampin' Up! ink. That does not include third-party ink, so no Versamark, no Memento. And it does not include the ink pad families. Like it's only individual ink pads. And you can get 20% off dies from the annual catalog. Not the one for Christmas, but just the annual catalog. 
Um, they've not specifically told us why, but I have my theory. I think it's all supply chain issues, so, okay. All right, so I've now cut those in, those tabs, and I'm actually gonna cut just a little bit off the edge for each one. Just, it gives it a little bit better look, and it makes it a little bit easier when you're trying to put it together. Okay, all right. The other thing I'll just mention while I'm sitting here cutting the little pieces off is that during the month of November, you can join Stampin' Up! for $100. Normally it's $135, but it is $100 this month. Uh, and so, and there's no tax and there's no shipping. So you pay 100 bucks and boom, you're a demonstrator. Um, and the nice thing about that is that if you were to go and buy $100 worth of product on its own normally, including the taxes and shipping, it would cost you just over 205 So you're effectively getting all that product at half price. Okay, so I'm just gonna quickly put a little bit of adhesive now onto each of these tabs. I'm using good adhesive too, stuff that's gonna stick. I'm gonna assemble my top of the box, my lid. Now, just one more thing about the whole sale slash joining Stampin' Up! thing. Next week during the sale, when items are on sale, you can actually add those sale items to your kit at the sale prices. So if you are choosing $165 worth of product to put in your kit, and you choose some of the cardstock that is on sale, then you're getting even more bang for your buck because you are spending less, you're spending less, yeah, I guess you're kind of like, you're spending less to get more. I don't know how else to really describe it. I was trying to figure that out when I was writing earlier today, but you know, if you're spending $165, if you're choosing $165 on product, and cardstock is normally $10 and now it's eight, you can get more cardstock in your kit. Whoops, I'm taking cardstock off here. So really, it's a phenomenal, phenomenal bargain. I can't, I keep saying with some of these that I don't remember anything as good as whatever it is we're doing, but my goodness, like, it is quite the good value. Okay, oh, I forgot to cut those ones off. If you ever have any questions about it, please let me know because, you know, I hit my 15th anniversary back on Thanksgiving Day and I do not regret this. Even though right now I'm going slightly bananas trying to manage this as well as uh, as work because Christmas has certainly started in the store and Chapters Indigo has all kinds of gifts for Christmas so I'm <laughs> people are shopping and I am busy and I come home from work and I'm tired so I try and get things done on my days off and I do not work on Thursdays all right okay there we go so there's one and there's two now we're gonna put together three and there's four. Now don't worry about writing these dimensions down while we're making this because I will write a quick tutorial for this and I'll make sure that I'll uh, I'll probably, it may not be out until next week because what I'll do is try and make the one that goes with this as well. So you have the box size for the little guys, the tequila rose and the Baileys and the little ones like that. And then you have the box size for the larger ones too. One of the examples that she had shown actually had like a, it had like a thing of fire whiskey or um, not fire whiskey, that's Harry Potter. Um, like a thing of a, it was like cinnamon, cinnamon fire something. I don't drink whiskey, so <laughs> something. And then she had a bag of nuts. And so, you know, with some masculine paper on the front, I thought, my goodness, that's great. Cause you could like turn around and give that to, you know, one of the men in your life. Okay, so for this guy, we're gonna fold it so that it's folded in half, but then those extra little ones, we're gonna take them and we're gonna fold them up. Okay, so like I said, this one is a little bit shorter because that's the side where one thing can go. It might be your nuts, it could be your chocolate, it really depends on the size, but we know that the smaller one might work well for your alcohol. Okay, so I'm gonna put some adhesive now on the back of these, and I'm gonna put them into the box. Okay, there's one side. And don't be stingy when you use your adhesive for this, because you do not want anything in your box to fall apart. Okay, so I have this longer piece, I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna put it in my box right at the absolute very bottom in the corner in the edge. You don't wanna press down until you know that you've got it exactly where you need it to be. Okay. All right, and then you're just gonna fold it in half and you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. It should be a perfect fit at that point. Okay, so now you have that piece in the center. And you can certainly make pieces if you want to kind of put in the center there just to delineate where your chocolates are gonna go. But I mean for this, because I opted to leave the Ferrero Rochers in their package because they just fit in nicely. 
Okay, so let's take that. We're going to put that aside for just a moment. We're going to decorate the top of our other box. Okay, so for the other box here, or the box lid, I guess, I have a piece of, I can never remember, it's heartwarming hugs? Heartwarming hugs. I have a piece of heartwarming hugs designer series paper. It is just real red and white, so it works really well. And then I went and I cut ahead of time, I went and cut the, um, the gold metallic paper for those stars that you see on the top of this one here. Now, the nice thing about this is that when I start popping this out, the main image, all the little stars are inside. So as I pop them out, I wanna keep them because those are the ones I'm gonna use just over there. Okay, let me just pull this out. Okay. So there's one star. And I don't need that piece, that's like a little extra piece. So let's get that out of there. And I didn't, I deliberately did not take this apart earlier because I didn't want to lose any of the pieces. Okay, so we've got the star, we've got another star. That's that piece over here. I had my fancy schmancy poker thing here a moment ago and I don't see it, so it must be behind me. Okay, I'm gonna take that out. And I wouldn't worry if you're not quite, if you haven't quite got the little tiny ones out, but you know, your bigger ones, they all come out quite easily and quite nicely. Okay, just a little one there. See, look at that, even a bone folder will pop them out. Okay. I had mentioned in my live video that my uh, my craft studio is a bit of a mess at the moment. In part because of the tutorial that I did for Split Coast Stampers a couple days ago, I just haven't had time to put everything back together again. Okay, so there we go, all right. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So I've got my big piece here. Now, if you have a look, you can see that it looks like it's a little bit smaller than the one that's on the box. And it is not. All I did, as I take about the last one, is I'm just going to cut it in half because you're not going to see these stars back here anyway. So rather than waste them, I want to go ahead and make them a little bit bigger. Okay. So let me quickly glue the designer series paper to the top of the box. Okay, and then once I have that designer series paper on, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use some of the uh, multi-purpose liquid glue, and I'm gonna go ahead and glue these little swirly guys on. So same thing, I'm actually not that, that, that overly concerned about what's in behind here if it ends up being a little bit messy because that's all gonna be covered. I don't want a lot of this glue to, to show. All right, so let's just get a little bit in here. I really just want enough to kind of keep it on the box. I don't want it to come flying off. If it's like a little bit loose, that's okay, because it kind of gives a little bit of a whimsical look to it, right? It just helps with that whimsical look of the box. All right, so let me just quickly glue this on. Okay, I'm just gonna put it up here in the top corner, hold it down just a little bit, and whoops, Apparently I had a little bit too much glue in there. I tried to glue it to myself, so there we go. All right, and then I will at the same time just put the other one on. Just had it sitting down there. I'm just gonna bring this one over here. I'm just gonna hold them for just a second. Okay, so while I'm holding them, if you have a look at this other box lid here, there's a little piece of felt on it. So we have, or not felt, velvet paper. So we have this really beautiful velvet paper and it feels really nice to the touch. There's two sheets in a package, and I went and just die cut this ahead of time with, uh, with the dies from, one of the dies from Seasonal Labels. So Seasonal Labels has got all the, um, the dies that cut out the pine cones and whatnot from, um, oh, the stamp set, I can't remember the name of, it's farther down on my table, but it also has these wonderful labels. So I went and I cut the, um, I went and cut the big one with the red, red velvet, and then I cut the smaller one with that stamped image. So the Have a Holly Jolly Christmas came from this particular stamp set here, from Christmas to Remember. And those dies for those labels fit with this stamp set, like they're meant to go with this. So it was really easy to find something that would work with that particular one here. And I mean, Have a Holly Jolly Christmas, when you're giving them some alcohol, it kind of seems fitting, doesn't it? Maybe just a little bit. All right, so I did also just go ahead and stamp that ahead of time, just to make sure. So we've got that. I'm gonna go ahead and layer these together with dimensionals. I use a couple of extra ones because I'm putting this on the velvet and I don't want it to come apart, right? Sometimes dimensionals can be finicky. Yep, that'll work quite nicely. Just peel these off. Okay. And 
and stick this on here really quickly. There we go. And then I'm gonna put some more on the back and then I'm gonna stick the whole thing down onto the box. Okay, all right, there we go. Not being too, too careful, I just wanna make sure that they're actually on the box and loose and available. Okay, so there we go. So I'm just gonna position this so it's sort of close to the center. I really want it to be even with the lines on the box. I don't want it to be crooked like this way or that way. Okay, all right. So now that I have this on, I can go ahead and put some stars on for positioning. I just didn't know where I wanted them, so I'm gonna put a little dot there. I'm gonna put a little dot there. I'm gonna put another dot there. I wanted to make sure that I had that space created before I actually went and, uh, and put the stars on because I didn't want them to be too close to the actual sentiment. Okay, there we go. And I'm just gonna grab one of the smaller ones yet again and just drop it on top. Okay, oh, see that one's almost a little bit close, but that's okay, it'll be fine. All right, so my last step for my lid of my box is to cut some ribbon. So I've got, this is the really, really shimmery, pretty gold, the gold shimmer ribbon. And so I am not going to cut off a piece ahead of time. I'm actually just gonna do this off the roll. So I've got a long piece here, hold it together with two fingers, wrap it around the top and bring it through. Okay, pull the tails back a little bit because I don't want it to be too big. I mean, you could certainly go ahead and cut this ahead of time. There's nothing, or tie it and cut it and everything, you know, ahead of time just so that you've got that extra ribbon. Okay. I think that's pretty good. One maybe a little shorter on that side. Okay, I'm just gonna quickly snip it off here. And now I'm gonna snip off the other side, but I'm not gonna get rid of this ribbon because I am a bit of a hoarder sometimes. This I will just use like as something I can fold behind an element. So I'm just gonna keep it, which is why I'm not all that concerned about exactly how much I had on the box. Okay, ooh, glue dots. I don't have my glue dots here. Hold on just a second. They are sitting right over here. All right, okay, so I'm just gonna add a glue dot to the back of my ribbon. Hopefully I don't have any dog fur in said glue dot because I did just pull a piece of dog fur away from the box. I'm starting to feel a little spooked tonight because when I was almost at the end of this video, I had just gone and was putting this bow on with, um, with the glue dot and then all of a sudden my camera kicked off on my phone and I don't really know what happened. So last step we've got here is uh, I have some of this white crinkly stuff. It actually came to me courtesy of Stampin' Up. They had sent us um, some gifts for those that are of a certain level, like Silver Elite and above, which, which I am. Normally during on stage, they give us gifts for center stage on the night before on stage. This time they couldn't because we weren't all there. So they sent them to us in the mail. So I've got these really, really lovely office things um there's like some paper holders and there's like a little uh, pen and pencil holder and so i just kept the paper because why toss that away so um i put some in the box and then i've just put my ferrero rochers on top i put my little bottle of uh, strawberry cream tequila rose in there which i actually want to try because i really like cream liqueur except i don't like bailey's actually and then you're just going to close it up and it will be a tight fit no question because it is quite a tight lid and that's okay because then your box is not gonna slide around. There we go. Okay, perfect. All right, so there you're good to go. I will go ahead and write a quick tutorial for these and then I will go ahead and post it on my page as well as the actual boxes and I'll see if I can put together a box with the wine in it because it will be a different size and we will go from there. So if you have any questions, please go ahead and write them in the comments and then aside from that, we will talk to you later. Thank you. Have a good night.